Hey guys, Josh here with Josh and Hunter's Adventures and welcome back to another episode of Tackle Making. Today's video, we're going to be pouring the Do It Freestyle Jig. Now this jig here, I mainly use for tight lining. So if you're not familiar with tight lining for bass, you need to go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be doing a lot of videos in the winter on tight lining. It's a great technique to catch bass in the winter time. So let's go ahead and take a look at this mold. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the freestyle jig mold by Do It. This is model FST-6-SA. Uh, this current model here has uh, sizes down to 132nd and up to a 316th. Uh, the only one that I pour for tight lining uh, for my use is an eighth ounce uh, in a one alt hook and I use a uh, owner hook. It's a model 5318 in, like I said, the one alt. And then you can see it has a place for a bait keeper. And uh, here's the bait keepers right here, just a little small uh, bait keeper that they use. And it's the same ones that are used in the, um, uh, the Midwest, uh, the little Ned mold. So if you have some of those, uh, those will interchange for this. Um, but you can see uh, the 132nd goes down to a number 4 and the uh, 316th goes all the way up to a 3 alt. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this uh, mold over on the uh, lead pot and let it warm up just a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and pour some of the 8th ounce uh, with the 1 alt and then we'll paint them up and put eyes on them. So you guys stick with us. So those of you that are beginners that are not for sure what I mean by heating up the mold, uh, by all I mean by that is, is all I do is I set the mold up on top of the lead pot because it's extremely hot where it's melted the lead. And uh, it just heats the mold up and uh, uh, you know pours a whole lot easier into the mold. All right, so what we'll probably do is we'll probably pour uh, four of the eighth ounce. That way we can paint them up uh, and uh, show you a couple of different colors. Um, so what I normally do is, is I've got my hook here and I've got my keeper. Uh, I normally try to lay the, the keeper in the slot first. Um, now those are kind of finicky sometimes. Depends on how, how big of fingers you got. But you'll lay it down in there. And what you want to hear is you want to hear it snap, okay? You want to hear it. You want to hear that snap, okay? So let's go over to the lead pot. And uh, let's go ahead and pour this first one. All right, I'm gonna try to do this the best that I can um, with the camera angle that I have. Doesn't take much because it's very, very small. Let's run back over here to the uh, table and check it out. All right, let's open it up and see what we've got. There it is, all we have to do is uh, uh, trim the little piece off there, and I'll go ahead and pour all these um, And then we'll cut all of them off, and I'll show you exactly how to do that uh, So let's go ahead and do another one Again like I said, uh, I found that it's easier to go ahead and put this little bitty keeper in there first Because they are little and hard to hard to work with at times All right again just want to make sure you hear a good snap and let's go over to the pot and pour this one okay let's go ahead and pour this one I said you just stop when it's right there at the top as you can see uh, just pretty much level with the uh, the mold let's go over to the table and check it out all right let's go ahead and take a look at the second one all right it looks good See there where it's got this little slot for the eyes to go. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and uh, pour the other two. And uh, we'll go ahead and get to the next step. We'll be cutting uh, the little piece of extra lead off that's on top of the mold there. Uh, again, you want to you hear that seal, that snap. Let me go ahead and pour these two and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so we've got all our jigs here. Uh, so what we have to do is, is we have to remove this piece right here. Uh, it's very easy. All you have to do is you take a pair of side cutters like this right here and you go in right up against the front of the jig head and you just gently squeeze. That lead is so soft that it will uh, break right off. But as you can see, 
we have a piece of like jagged edge there from the lead. So what I do is I'll take just a regular file and it doesn't take much. Just gently go across the top of it there and you can see it's, it's smooth. So uh, again, you know, like I said, you just snip it off. I'll go ahead and uh, do the rest of these, cut all these off and then file them all down. And you just take these extra pieces and, uh, and uh, put back in your lead pot. But it doesn't take much because, like I said, this lead is so soft. You can see how easy that comes off. Just falls right down. You just don't want to leave that on there because it doesn't look good and it could easily, easily cut your line. Okay, so we've got all these filed down. Uh, our next step now is going to be painting. Uh, and a lot of times what I do is, is I'll just leave them um, silver. Uh, you know, the, the color of the lead, just put eyes on them or don't even put eyes on them. You know, sometimes uh, I don't think that a lot of times it really matters. But uh, today what we'll do is, is we'll leave one. I'll let you see, uh, just put some eyes on one. That way you can see what they look like. And then maybe the other three, maybe we can paint them up and uh, you can sort of get an idea of what it looks like painted. All right, so let's go over some of the things that you're going to need to paint these jig heads with. Uh, I use Protect Powder Paint. Uh, all you have to do is you just heat it up with this small little torch right here and you'll dip it down in the powder and that's how you get your color. What we're going to be using today is pearl. Uh, we'll do a little bit of accent color of some chartreuse and uh, this is Elwife here. It's got it's a, like a little hint of shad. Uh, it's going to be a two-tone color so we're going to use a paintbrush. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our jig ready here. What I use is a small little set of forceps. We'll fire this torch up. Doesn't take much heat at all. So be very, very careful. You don't want to overheat it. Just get it slightly heated up and then just dip it down into the powder paint. Okay? You can see it doesn't take much heat at all. So this is your pearl base here. Dip it down in there one more time, give it a good coating. And you can see that's our pearl base. I'm not sure how well you can see that. What we're going to do is, is we're going to set this over here in our little toaster oven. And we're going to bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we'll put the eyes on them. What that does is that bakes that, that powder paint on there. And it makes the uh, coating a whole lot stronger. Uh, it won't chip as easy. So let's go ahead. And we'll go ahead and do another coat of white on this one. And then we'll do an accent color. And I will tell you this, it, it, don't overheat them. If anything, do another coat, a very light coat, okay? Because you do not want to overheat these jigs. Because it makes the powder paint an absolute mess. So, now, what we're going to do is, is I'm going to show you how to make a two-tone. I'm going to do it across the top. So you just need to lightly heat the top. And you're going to take your paintbrush, and you're going to dip it down in your powder paint, okay? You dip it down in your powder paint, get some on there, heat the top of our jig where it's going to be going, and just lightly tap and just dust that jig. And you will see what that looks like. Now what I will do is I will run it just to gently heat it back up over that flame. I want you guys to be able to see that, I hope, hope you can. Uh, we'll get a better view of it once we bake them. I'll go ahead and set this over here in the little oven. And we'll get our chartreuse ready. This is the part that I enjoy the most right here is the painting part. Like I said, there's, there is a lot of trial and error on how much you actually heat it up. You don't want to overheat it. Like I said, if you don't heat it enough, you can always go back and do it again. You can see there, that wasn't very long at all. Just need to dip it one more time and run it back through the flame. And we are good to go.
That one looks really good. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do the chartreuse the same way. You're just going to take your brush down in there. And you're just going to lightly tap across the top. That's all you wanted. It's on the top. Try to show you what this looks like. Maybe you got some dirty water situations. I like to get just a little bit right there on the nose. I like the way that looks. I'll let you take a look at this and we'll put them in the oven. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this oven uh, at about 250 degrees, 225 is normally somewhere around in where I run it for about 20 minutes. After they get done baking, we'll go on to putting the eyes on. Okay, so we got them out of the oven here. Uh, you can see, um, which this is the model we left unpainted. Uh, this is the all pearl model. Looks really good. This is your chartreuse with a little bit of white there on the bottom. You see how we blended it in. This is the Elwife color. It's almost got like a little purple haze to it, just a little bit, I guess, is what that would be. But uh, let's go ahead and put the eyes on. We'll do the uh, silver one first. The best way that I have found to put on eyes is to take a sewing needle. Okay, so the eyes come on this little sheet of paper here. So what I do is I take the needle, and I just barely lift up on it, Try to get it to uh, unstick because it has extremely sticky stuff on the back of it. And then you just take it and apply it like that right there. You give it a press, flip it over. Same thing. Get it where you want it. I guess this is the tedious work of it. And like I said, you don't even have to have eyes on them. I just want to show you guys what it would look like unpainted. Doesn't look bad at all. You can see there, I mean, you can take that out and fish that and it'll catch them right off the bat. Uh, you don't even have to paint them. We'll go ahead and uh, on this white one, we'll go ahead and put red eyes on it and we'll do silver on the other. That way it'll give you a little bit idea of what they look like. That red on that, that looks really good though. Makes the makes the jig really pop. Just centering it up is the hardest part. And if it's off a little bit, I don't guess it really matters. There's that one. That looks really good. Now let's go to the silver for the other two. Grab this L wife color here. Give it a good press. And there's the silver. Looks really good. Now for the chartreuse. Like I said, you had some dirty water or, or stained water. This color combo right here would be really good. Look at that. That looked good. Good looking color. All those baits right there look really good. We'll go ahead and get a close up of these and uh, we'll finish the video up. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video on the Do It Freestyle Jig Mold. Like I said, if you're into tight lining, this is the head to throw right here. And if you're not familiar with tight lining, like I said, you need to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. That way you know when we put out videos. 
Got a lot of good videos coming out this winter. There'll be a lot of tight lining, so maybe you can learn something about that technique. If you have any questions or comments, please go down in the comment section and leave those there. I'll be glad to answer them the best that I can. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Josh for Josh and Hunter's Adventures.